Hello everyone, I am Day9 and this is Steal This Build number one. That is right, in the Steal This Build series we will learn the secrets of many of the amazing build orders that came out of MLG Columbus in a way that you can directly lift them and plop them down on your own ladder matches to win away. Today's very first Steal This Build will be all about MMA's aggressive TVZ style. Yes, indeed. Before we jump into MMA's aggro TVZ, I wanted to give the framework that we're going to be discussing all builds. It is going to be the three following ideas. The guiding principles of the build, the opening of the build, and the deviations and things to worry about in the build. First one, the guiding principles are the overall basic themes and ideas that are going to run through this uh, build order. These are important pillars to plant down early on because no matter where you are in your build, in particular no matter where you are in the opening, you want these guiding principles to, you know, help guide you. Something saying, or something as ridiculous and simple as, I want three bases and ten barracks. You can be in a very weird situation in the early game and always know kind of where you want to be going to. Or even saying something simple like, I will always get combat shield before stim. Very simple theme does not depend on anything like how what my food is or how much money I have or anything like that. The opening is where those nitty gritty details will end up happening. Should you build a barracks on 12? Should you build a gas and then a barracks? When does that command center start? What do you build after you build a command center? That's the real nitty gritties of the opening. And the opening will be the, um, the key to getting the best possible mid game and deal with all the possible aggression that could come at you. And of course the deviation, this finger, the appropriate finger, even though it might not look like it, the deviations are all going to be things like um, deviations, things that change, both within the game and, and outside of the game. Within the game would be something like, oh my gosh, Baneling's busted my ramp, what do I do now? Um, in between games would be something like, I'm going to plan this against the guy going Mutilus, and I'm going to plan this against the guy going Infester. So without any further ado, let's talk about MMA. MMA recently won MLG Columbus with an outrageously cool Terran vs. Zerg. He made most of the same units that all other people make, Marines, Tanks, and Medivacs. However, what made his style so cool was the outrageous aggression, the incredible amount of drops going on in particular, many of which seemed suicidal but still would always help him get in better and better positions. Interestingly, I watched through every single one of his games and MMA is doing slightly different openings in all the games. Um, in some of the games he opens Banshee, in other of the games he just opens two racks. In some of the games he opens um, one, uh, one Barracks Fast Tank. In the games we're going to look at, he's going to be opening up Fast Reaper. The reason I chose the Fast Reaper opening is that he actually did it in two different games. So that way we can look at these two different games that he did them in and get a sense of why he's doing these slight differences. I want two games that are as similar as possible so we can sort of see the same build in two different situations. The first is going to be one of my favorite games from MLG Columbus, MMA versus July. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, as this game is starting off, I want to note one of the big guiding principles to this. The first one is that we're going to... Actually, well, let me, let me just give a precursor to it. What we're going to see uh, our good friend MMA do is he's going to open Reaper, and then he's going to get a bunch of barracks with combat shield first, and then transition into a typical marine tank medevac. Obviously, we're going to talk about a lot of the details as we go. But big principles to note. First of all, getting that combat shield first, doing a defensive-oriented opening. That's another guiding principle. The biggest guiding principle that I want to emphasize that we're going to see um, crop up is favoring the reactor on the starport to get a lot of medevacs out rather than the faster second factory. Many Terran players nowadays sort of pull back on the whole medevac idea and really emphasize the tanks and marines, the strong muscular force. Players like Slayer's Boxer does this a lot. Not an, not MMA, not MMA at all. So let's go ahead and pop right in. We want to talk as much about the opening as we can right now. Just wanted to briefly note what we were going to see. Um, we're going to highlight more guiding principles as they come along, and when we look at the second game, we can talk a little bit more about deviations that can occur uh, from game to game. So we have MMA spawning here at the top. Let's go ahead and keep our focus mainly on MMA at this time. Uh, try to ignore all, all July's stuff, because 
a lot of times it's very easy to look at something like go, oh yeah, you know, July is going to early expand. I guess this makes sense. But then all of a sudden, if you're tearing, your vision is actually this. It's actually virtually nothing. So you don't want to get confused by making conclusions that are reasonable after the fact, as opposed to a conclusion that would be reasonable if you were playing yourself in the same position. So we're going to see a very typical barracks on 12 go down from MMA. Great. And then coming up, we are going to see a refinery. Dum -ba -dum -bum -ba. There it goes down. Cool. SCVs getting ready. Continuing to make SCVs. For any of you who don't play Terran, we want to expect a 15 orbital command. That is the good money time for the orbital command because notice it sinks right up with the barracks. Yes, that's right, at 15. And what's that 16 food doing? That is our marine. Interesting fact already to notice. No scouting going on. None whatsoever. This is MLG Metalopolis, so we know our opponent cannot spawn here. But our SCV did bounce briefly here, so MMA is reasonably confident that his opponent is not located here. But still, no scouting in the slightest. None. Zip nada. Very, very no to scouting. Okay, so this is something that's very easy to overlook, but um, I will note this very important fact. A worker mines about 40 to 45 minerals per minute. So if you send that scout worker out, on Metalopolis, if you check one base and then check another, that's about a minute and a half to two minutes. So it's like 100 minerals out the window if you end up scouting too early. That is pretty significant. If those sorts of margins really matter, it's what we call a very, very thin build. I'm going to be doing that later in the Steel this build series. Uh, I believe in the Protoss for Protoss um, that I'm going to be doing in number four. But I just want to note that this is sort of interesting that we're not seeing this SCV pop out. Often you'll see a player steal a build like what MMA is doing and then not appropriately match the scout timing. And then what happens is when you're trying to be MMA, you're just like, but I don't have any money. This was too hard. And MMA seems superhuman when in fact he is a very short, incredibly human Korean guy who's totally kick-ass. And you can be kick-ass too. So the tech lab going down. This is a pre-game decision. This is not a response. This is not because we saw anything. And look, even MMA wasn't that convinced that his opponent wasn't nearby him. This is him just saying, on Metalopolis, I think that it is a good decision to get a fast tech lab. And we see a Reaper popping down right away. Great. SCV going to scout, as we can see from the vision of the SCV and the vision that we have from our production hack, <laughs> um, that it's an early expand from Zerg. Great. So now we have an excellent sense of what is going on here. Is there any gas? There is gas going down. Ah. So the, the immediate moment when we see this, there's some useful tactics you can do, such as clicking on this extractor and seeing how much gas is mined. Wow, look, almost 100's been mined. I guess we're going to see zergling speed. Um, this is not a very frequently mentioned technique, but, you know, a very, very important technique nonetheless. So we're going in here. So if I was MMA, I would probably pull down here for just a little bit, just make sure that some speed's going down. It looks like he's going to pop back, yes, and then he does see the speed. So he will be pulling back. Regardless, we're going to see uh, continuing to make SCVs. And here is a command center getting planted right away. Why is this safe? Why is there no orbital command right here? Two reasons in my eyes. We are cross map plus he has just started speed. So speed, as you'll note, takes 110 seconds. That's, that's like two minutes. We're going to have plenty of time. We're going to be in good shape. So Reaper number one, popping out. Reaper number two, getting produced right away, heading immediately straight out into the foray. Continuing to make SCVs, one wonderful advantage of building Reapers early is they take so long and they're only one food, so this means that we can easily stockpile money and not spend that much on supply depots. So we're going to see the two barracks go down right now. Let's plant them. Our Come SCVs on. Ka chunk, ka chunk. Reaper immediately just goes to the watchtower. Again, an interesting little idea here. We're not seeing a very fast aggression by this Reaper, just some watchtower holding. Now, one thing that I will note that is always great about any sort of Reaper opening um, is that we can get ourselves an early command center. But the one thing that I love so much is that a lot of people like to go barracks straight into command center. But. 
if we already have this refinery letting us already get this tech lab, we can begin getting these upgrades quite early. I mean, if you think about the way a normal Terran Berserk goes, well, let, not let me say a normal because it's not like this is that unusual, but the way many Terran vs. Zergs will go is that the Terran player will begin stockpiling mainly Marines, uh, generally off like reactor barracks or maybe just two barracks without add-on. The, the factory will begin making tanks, will start stockpiling those tanks very, very, very early on so that way they can do a big scary push. And then right when the tech, then they'll make a tech lab after they have a good amount of Marines and then they'll start upgrading that stim. So that way they can do a pretty aggressive early push. But now we're going to be able to get this combat shield very, very, very early on. Incredibly early on. There it is already going down. And we're going to use these two Reapers to do a lot of control of the map. Some scouting, but mainly to force all of July Zergi's units into defensive mode. We can even see this from the July Zerg cam. Just this one single Overlord here. And July Zerg already very aggressively taking his third base. For the record, we're not really going to be watching all of this game, just uh, the early portions of this game, because I want to be able to get onto the second match versus Lucera. Mmm, excuse me. Got a little bit of uh, delicious pizza still stuck in my uh, still stuck in my throat. I consumed a good amount of that uh, earlier today. So here are the three barracks going down. We're going to see MMA right off the bat be making a good amount of Marines. I would like to indicate to you that this is a defensive play, getting this many barracks early on. This is not him preparing to be aggressive. Too frequently you'll see players throw down a bunch of reactors because they'll be thinking, yeah, I'm going to get my combat shield, then I'm going to attack with a bunch of marines. Or, you know, maybe they'll even get a tech lab and then a reactor and then get the combat shield and the stim started at the same time. You do not have that many units. Keep in mind that these two reapers tied up this barracks for full 100 seconds. That's again, that's almost two minutes of time. That's a lot of time. You can make a frick ton of Marines in that time. So we're gonna see MMA really be doing this primarily as a defensive maneuver. Still one gas. Still not that much aggression out of the Reapers. Really not that much aggression out of the Reapers. I mean, maybe they've poked up to the high ground a little bit, but look, three kills, one kill. Not going hog wild with the Reapers. These re Reapers are space control units. They are not, holy shit, I might be able to kill a drone units. You don't want to suicide those extremely expensive Reapers because they are expensive for time. 45 seconds. Nearly 50 seconds. It's like so much time. So when these Zerglings end up sweeping on up, obviously, the big tactic we want to make sure that we do is to have these... Um, supply depots ready and available to lift up at any point in time. I actually do not mind hotkeying these with an available hotkey, so that way you can just hit zero and immediately raise them. Really important to kind of have that availability running. And also some people might say, why combat shield instead of stim? Uh, because combat shield will actually, in the long run, end up being better because what you what stim lets you do is it lets you kill things really, really, really fast. Combat Shield will let your guys be alive a little longer, and I know that that sounds very obvious, but there's this erroneous logic that happens a lot of time that let's say uh, you have 10 Marines versus... Um, actually, let's just do 10 Marines versus 10 Marines, where um, in a lot of circumstances, people will stim always if they can. In, in many circumstances, it's more correct to just engage in that fight with no stim, because the important thing is, how much stuff do you have left over at the end of the battle? If you stim and you have five marines left over, that's better than if you don't stim and just end up shooting slowly, having more health, and you have four guys left over. But it becomes very exaggerated when the numbers are skewed. So for instance, ten marines versus one marine. Obviously don't stim. 10 Marines versus 1 Marine, just attack straight up. But as those numbers start getting closer to even, people start to just spam the T button. And I encourage you to experiment with times where you just straight up attack. Because defensively, we really are going to be valuing these shields a lot more against the Zerglings. If we actually stim, we're going to be dying ultra fast with some super, super weak Marines. It's much better to have the combat shield defensively early on. And plus combat shields... Um, a little faster. It's 110 seconds versus 170 seconds. So there's a lot of early craziness that Zerg can do that we can easily avoid. Research 
Complete. So now we're going to see the factory go down. Still nothing but Marines getting produced. MMA doing marginal amounts of scouting. Not that much. And look, he spots it and just retreats. MMA is trying very carefully to manage himself around cliffs. I want you to notice how passive these Reapers are being. Again, another guiding principle to this build. You want to keep the Reapers alive. The Reapers are not suicide units that you're going to be marching off to try to hopefully kill nine workers at the start of the game. No, no, no. They're space controlling units that will allow you to control space so long as they're living. So keep them alive. So we're going to see a lot of wandering by cliffs. Yeah, sure, we could have gone from here straight back to the watchtowers, but we're going up here to this high ground where we can bounce back and forth and dodge zerglings, and then we're going to be heading back here. Very safe maneuver. Now we're going to watch something that's really, really hard to do. <laughs> We're seeing MMA just go for a push. The obvious trigger is that I saw this expansion. Um, important thing to note, if there are roaches in this mixture, they will crush this army. Why is it still okay for MMA to move out? Well, because marines are the same speed as roaches. We can easily pull back. So it's really only speed zerglings that we're that concerned about. Let's go back to the MMA camp. We see the factory going down. Okay, notice. Interestingly, again, another guiding principle. We are favoring reactor star ports. We are favoring that. Now, why is that? This is actually a little bit of a deviation answer. Very frequently, we will see MMA begin getting tanks very early. Like, in fact, in one game against Lucera, MMA built a Reaper and then just lifted that barracks, moved it back, and built a factory right on top of the old tech lab. So that way he could begin the tank production right away. Why, in this game, does he seem so hell-bent on getting up those medevacs? Think, 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 think a rinky do. This is one of the most important questions right now because opening-wise, Reaper into three, or Reaper, expand, three barracks, combat shield. Say that again, Reaper, expand, three barracks, combat shield. This is going to happen in the two games we're going to see. Same, consistent, clean, no deviation. That is the opening. That is pure, clean, and simple. We're going to have that same guiding principle of keep that Reaper alive in both games. Yet in this game, whoa, what's with that medevac going up so fast? Well, here's the answer. If we see three hatches that quickly, what can he not have? Ooh, pick me, the only person who's watching this recording right now. That's right. He cannot have a layer. Jalizer cannot possibly have a layer and therefore cannot possibly have the big threats to medevacs. Hydralisks, queens, and mainly mutalisks. Mutalisks are not going to be on the field at all. So what MMA is going to do is he's just going to begin getting those medevacs very, very, very early on. This is a technique that we've seen him do a lot, 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 lot in his games. Whenever he senses that his opponent does not really have a layer up, it's all drop all the time, no problem. What, two queens there? That's fine. Shoot at the medevac. That's good. Go for it. I'll just lift it up and run away with, you know, 25 to 50 health on the medevac and... I'm fine. Cool. Let's go back into the game. So here comes the very, very hard part, right? Here comes the hard part to do. By the way, obvious counterattacks are a problem. Run to your bunker. Unburrow the depot. Don't panic. We see the Marines marching their way up. Leading with the Reapers, we're using their grenades to try to do damage. Now, uh, MMA still very cautious. He doesn't want to do damage. He wants to keep things alive in the early game. Terran will lose tons of momentum if they cannot keep things alive in the early game. Here's the hardest thing you will ever see in your entire life. Okay, I'll even slow it down. Here's the Reapers getting micro. He's just sitting here with the Marines dealing damage. You don't have to do that. That's really good. Important things to note, the Marines stayed alive for a very long time, even though they weren't doing their stim worth of timing. Um... One thing that I'm not going to go back and look up is when the second gas went down. That's actually a pretty critical thing. Actually, that's so critical, I have to go find that out. 
But you don't really have to be that good with your control. I mean, if you are gold level, you'll do gold level control and do a gold level's worth of damage, and that's fine because you're at gold level. If you're, you know, tip-top Grandmaster and can control like that, you'll be up against a Grandmaster where you actually do need to do that much damage, and that's going to be just fine, right? So in other words, control those Marines and Reapers as well as you can, and you will be in great shape regardless of your level. Okay, so here's an easy sync up. We build our factory right as we're getting our refinery, and we're getting our factory right when our tech lab is getting close to being finished. So let's zoom forward to where we were. So we're, we're getting an engineering day, and um, I'm actually not going to worry as much about this because this doesn't seem like an absolutely essential component, but uh, a lot of this stuff is. Obviously, you're going to want your plus one, but the timing is not as strict as in other circumstances. So why did MMA want to keep those units alive as opposed to trying to do a lot of miracle damage with it? Because one of the big principles that we're going to see in a lot of MMA's play is that he begins to actually do damage when he gets drops. Medivacs are his key to go, go, go. Not going to try to do... Oh, thank you, Marine. He's not going to try to do it that much sooner. So, all right. Right as our medivacs are popping out, third command center going down. Wow, that's actually quite impressive. And again, I encourage you to go get these replays to get the real specifics of the opening. We're doing some focus on the exact exact openings, you know, like, for instance, this factory plus refinery timing. However, I don't want to focus as much on the opening because I want this to be a little bit more of a quicker episode of Steal This Build, so that way we can look at two games and two sets of deviations. Notice this combo, moving out with the medevacs getting the reactors very important thing to note as we are moving out to begin to be aggressive that is when we begin to add on all this fancy stuff and oh how i love this once our stim and combat shield is done we give that tech lab the factory and then we begin getting our tankiness now humorously enough notice that there's one marine back here and there are yeah that's it there's one marine back home for defense why does this end up being okay? Because these two Reapers allow us to control space. Look at the July Cam. July can't exactly move out that much. He's just lost a bunch of Zerglings. He wants to get all his drones up. And these pesky Reapers are controlling the Watchtowers. Are you starting to see now why it's so important to keep these Reapers alive? This defense looks so thin, but is not actually as thin as it is. It's these Reapers that are controlling the space so well. If for some reason there was any sort of intimidation coming up, then they could easily respond in time. Okay, so, yet another guiding principle. L unload far away from where you want to attack. Unloading at the edges, not unloading like here, not unloading here, not taking these marines and unloading them back there. No, getting them all on the ground first. And we see, yet again, MMA wants to keep these guys alive as much as possible. Trying to maneuver them through, M miraculously does. Largely thanks to this. But yep, we're getting this Viking out, and we've kind of slowed up on our medevac production. We wanted to get a reactor starport, so that way we could get out a huge swell of medevacs when we needed. Two, right away. And look, just taking damage, not a big deal. We don't care, we just want to hit him in as many places at once. I'm going to be watching this replay. Uh, a tad bit longer, I want to show off some of the tactics that MMA is going to be using. And again, there's an orbital command going up real fast. When we get this engineering bay relatively early on, please attune this to your style. We note that, yeah, we're still not quite favoring tanks as much. We're instead favoring the Marines, the upgrades for the Marines, the drops for the Marines. And see, look, we even actually forgot about this medevac for a while. And by we, I mean MMA forgot about it. If you watch this replay, the queen does a lot of damage. But you know what? Who cares? There's nothing else that can hit it. I mean, is there, is there a spire on the field? Did I miss a spire? No. Nope, no spire. Nope, we're in great shape. Hooray for being MMA. See how smart that was? Oh, MMA, you are so delightfully awesome. So, per usual, lots of marines coming out upgrades going down very very early on 
getting some tanks, still just one factory worth of tanks, spending all the rest of our moolah on those basics. Now, MMA, interestingly, here's a deviation. MMA, interestingly, getting these two tech lab barracks. Many Terran players completely abandon barracks with tech labs and instead go all reactor barracks. Get as many reactor barracks as they can to make as many Marines as they can, not MMA. He's going to be making Marines out of them for the time being, but he's leaving himself available to splash some Marauders into this mixture. And the last thing that we're seeing MMA add into this mix is a second factory. This is pretty important to note because two factories is, is sustainable on these two bases. But we still favored getting this reactor on the starport really early, just so we could get two medevacs fast. Not so we could just keep hitting the D button and get mass, 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 mass medevac, but as we're going to see, when MMA wants to start doing more drops, he's just going to tap that D button on there. He's making marines, getting upgrades, spending his gas on the usual meaty types of, uh, types of Terran units, the tanks, the marines. And there's the repair going on. Notice how little vision our Terran buddy has. He does have a Marine at the left. He does have a Viking that's been kind of marching around in the middle. Viking, any time your drops are going to be really, really good, is generally the same time that your Viking is going to be really, really good. I mean, if he doesn't have a Spire, then obviously he still doesn't have a Spire. Let me try that. If he doesn't have a Spire to deal with your drops, then he doesn't have a Spire to deal with your Vikings. I may have said Spider, but that's fine. It can be a Spider if we want. So note at this point in time, this is obviously not good, but I want you to note that the production is your typical Terran production. The gas is going to tanks, the gas is going to upgrades, and the remainder of the minerals is going to these barracks. Not very much gas going to medevacs. It ends up being a rough situation. Ignore this, right? This is a Grandmaster S-Class level bust in by Zerg and an S-Class level defense by Terran. You don't need to be this good, right? You don't need to be this good. What we're going to look at now is once MMA is stabilized, it's about equal. I mean, we have 87 to 64, but in the unit station we see that, uh, yeah, it's actually a decent... Uh, amount of drone lead from uh, Zerg. Yeah, so Zerg is uh, ahead by a little bit, if only this orbital command were able to have more workers at it, but we only have 27 as Terran. So I... That's fine, though. Now we get to watch the fancy part of this game. Notice MMA. Let me actually pull back to right when this attack was going on. Here's something really subtle. Very, very subtle that is still important to note, right? We're getting wailed on, just absolutely punished. What are we going to be building now? Think about that. Do we want to build just tanks? Do we want to build just marines? Do we want to build some marines and some tanks? How do we distribute that set of money? Well, MMA reveals something very interesting. Obviously doing a nice job here, obviously doing a nice job of the speedy pickup. Or as the achievement calls it, HOT PICKUP! But watch this. Watch, 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 watch. Okay, in the unit station we have two tanks, but in production we have three medevacs out on the field, right? Let's see if we can find them. There's one, there's one... Yeah, there's the other. In a situation of total dire straits, what is MMA going to do? He's actually going to go back to medevac production. This is very, very interesting. Anytime our opponent is low on units of any sort, MMA does drops. He's always looking for excuses to do dropping. Come on, where's the medevac production? Come on. There it is. Yeah, look at that. He actually even cancelled some stuff to be able to build these medevacs. Look at this. Dump -ba -dump -ba -dump -ba. And then he's going to hit escape a whole bunch of times. No, actually, I don't know what he cancelled. Look, but he's making two medevacs. <laughs> MMA is constantly looking for reasons to be able to drop. And his opponent being low on units now is a good reason for him to drop. His opponent having no ability to do damage via air, very good reason to drop at the start of the game. So we're seeing MMA use reasons to attack. 
This is a huge difference than what everyone will say on a forum. Whoa, the key to MMA success is relentless dropping. And then what people will do is they'll see his opponent going one base mutilisk, and they'll be like, time to drop, and then they'll lose everything, and they'll go, hmm, you don't want to go, hmm. So that's why we're watching these replays so slowly. So we did a lot of the opening. We did some deviation stuff. But right now, what we're really doing is seeing where these guiding principles are of when we can drop. Look at the unit counting station. There's We're up to five medevacs. Not getting tanks two at a time quite yet. Still making a lot of marines. Here's the drop going on. Oh, yep. Viking doing some more double prongedness. MMA not going on any ground offensive. And now we see the 13 needles getting produced by July. We're going to watch this game just slightly longer. We want to see the way these tanks interact with the drops. Still have the Viking doing some good amount of damage. This, you won't really see MMA do that often. Dropping directly at the back of a, of a worker line. Or directly where Zerg can see him. Generally drops a little bit farther away. So now we uh, at last are seeing the Mutalisks come in. Yes, at last the Mutalisks. Uh, largely spending his money on these mobile units. No tanks being made. No... Uh, medevacs being made. Yet again, dropping far away. And here's an interesting tactic that uh, many times you'll see players do something where they'll push like this. And as they're pushing, they'll have a drop ship poach along the right side and then swing down. In other words, follow my mouse to the minimap. They'll do an attack here, and they'll do an attack here to defend this upper walk path. But we see MMA literally going to opposite ends of the map. When your opponent has a lot of mutilus, 18 is a ton. That is a big threat, a big amount of pressure. So MMA literally, if he has enough of a ground army as well, will begin hurling medevacs at his opponent. Just accepting that they will die. Because as we can see, it puts July in awkward situations. He wants to bring the mutilus back to kill this, but then the drop, but then this main attack force becomes really scary. Likewise, if the Mutals are here, trying to defend the, the main attack, then the drop becomes a little bit scarier. You have to, in other words, be very, very careful about positioning things when you are in July's position. And now watch this. This is actually a very interesting moment from MMA. He just pulls back. He doesn't go for the jugular. He just pulls back. I honestly think that this is because he doesn't have any sort of dual prongedness to this. There's no drop and push going on at the same time. Coming back to production. Now that he is able to um, finally get this extra base up and he's finally had some stability and more importantly that he has a lot of medevacs that are able to do drops. Now he's going back to the tank production. Now! Look at these like getting close to 120 food. Yeah! That's when it's time to get those tankies up baby. And almost always he has a drop at the other end of where he's attacking. We're going to actually speed through the later stages of the game just so we can see, yep, here's an attack here and a drop going on over there. Opposite ends. And then it looks like he's going to pull over here to the, well, oh, there's this drop coming in. Another drop coming in. This is the hurling the medevacs. And this actually has a different flavor than the drops that we've seen beforehand. The drops we've seen beforehand are very much so, what are you going to do about it, Zerg? Come on, what really are you going to do? Are you going to build spore crawlers? Are you going to have like 10 queens at each base? Come on. Though That's the way that those early drops worked. I mean, what else can Zerg really do when he's lost all his units and he has no spire? But this one is very much so, Mutilus are an absolute nightmare for me to deal with. So if I just keep hurling medevacs at you and sacking like 10 food at a time, I'll eventually get all my troops into a good position. And this is what we start to see when we come back to the MMA cam. Um, we do see he's spending most of his energy on these mules. Interestingly, many Terrans will favor scans later on. But uh, I do believe we still have the Reapers alive somewhere in here. Per usual, wherever a drop is, there's an attack going on at the opposite end of the screen. Almost always. You even saw when the drop was hooking along this side, like a few seconds ago, where was MMA? He was here pushing down this lane. Opposite ends. Opposite ends. Speeding, 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 speeding. Pulling back yet again. He's just trying to deny extra bases. An instant that we start to get a little bit low on the medevac count. Let's pump that sucker back up with our double reactor port. Woohoo! Yeah! 
Those mutilists have done very little aggression. Here comes yet another drop. Let's see how he ends up doing it. Would not be surprised to see him push the right and then drop the bottom left again. Speeding right along. Well, having a little bit of trouble with that. Whoa, let's cutting it a little bit close. But uh-oh, drop on the right, pushing on the left. Are you seeing how these drops are actually happening at opposite ends of the attack? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward to say. It's very hard to execute because you have to have very, very wicked high APM. But there's yet another scan. Look, trying to make sure that this is in good position. And suddenly, a killing blows dealt. Where he manages to pick off the spawning pool. I will now be quitting this game to go on to yet another one. Not because I want to ruin all the fun for you, but because it's important that we get to see some deviation go on. The next game was... Who was it against? Oh yeah, Los Sierra. We're going to see something wildly different end up occurring. Multiplayer, Columbus, Championship Bracket, Final, Slayers Los Sierra. Yeah. Going in. So, once again, we're going to re-review some of the opening, but just a little bit faster. We're going to look at some of those opening principles, or those guiding principles, uh, just a little bit faster. And then we're going to look at some deviation. Ooh, deviation, deviation. DV deviation. Losira spawning at the north position. We're seeing MMA spawn at the right position. You're going to be uh, probably surprised at how similar these games are. Uh, I certainly was, especially considering the MMA has been doing a ridiculous amount of variety in this tournament. Again, this is from MLG Columbus. So there's the refinery going down, the barracks going down. In this particular iteration, we see MMA going for the tech lab. Um, Noah. Yep, straight away. There we go immediately goes for the tech lab but it's going to be the same basic idea here's the reaper coming up the difference here is that this reaper is actually going to do a ridiculous amount of damage see second reaper coming up drone running the circuit uh interestingly an scv actually following this guy around uh here's the moment in time where this reaper actually gets i believe nine kills before it ends up biting the dust but we don't care about that, interestingly. I mean, you will care if, if it's you. You'll be really happy. You'll be, oh, I'm the greatest player in the world. Does it, does it get nine kills? Oh, okay, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> I wanted to know. See, look, same guiding principle. Getting our combat shield first. Did we get a marine first? No. Well, still, we're getting combat shield first. Oh, if that drone gets killed, that would be so boss-ass. That would be so boss-ass boss. The goal is to keep the Reapers alive. The goal is not to suicide the Reapers. Same basic principles going on. Also in the opening, we're going to be getting ourselves our orbital command very soon. Why did we not build this on the low ground? Because our opponent was in close positions and we had yet to scout him out. Factory going down. We're going to see the refinery likely go down at a similar time as before. Yep, factory lining up approximately with that refinery. Continuing to build many marines. And again, is a very big defensive play. We're getting that combat shield up early. Great. Speeding things right along. Uh-oh, looks like an overlord coming in. Get out of this base, overlord. Again, we're going to see... Oh, it looks like a tech lab going down this time. Hmm. A little bit of variation. Still doing a little bit of a push with the Marines and the Reapers, but mainly just to freak Zerg out, and our main goal here is to keep our units alive. Once again, we are going to see a favoring... Oh, looks like he's getting these siege tanks up. We're going to eventually see a favoring of these medevacs. Now, this might look a little bit different. Yeah, it's slightly different getting these tanks up. I think this is a sensible deviation. I mean, we're in close positions, so we can easily do something like walk to here, siege up, and push into his main base. That's very, very difficult to do. We saw that our opening was the same, but I want you to watch. We're all of a sudden going to be in a much more awkward position when Losira does this gigantic banging bust. There's the lift. We're very glad we walled off so we could pull that off. Now watch this. This is one of my favorite parts of this whole game. Look at our unit counting station. We have a tank. And immediately MMA begins to make a medevac. It's going to be able to pick some of this stuff off. Now why are we making the medevac? 
Well, we're always looking for an excuse to build or to do a drop. What is the excuse that we have? He just made a bunch of lings and bane links on two bases. And we kill a bunch of drones early. That was a big effort by Lasira to try to just kill us right off the bat. So suddenly, suddenly, we did the same basic opener. And now we're going to use this general guiding principle of when to drop to just go freaking drop them, right? Ooh, yeah, all right. Now, MMA does have these two tanks up. This is going to be so useful. Tanks are going to be such a defensive linchpin early on that it will allow us to do these drops. Any time a drop would be good is generally a similar time where we can rely on our tanks for defense. And we don't need that much additional ground. Because what if he... I mean, what what other units can he have? Lings, Banelings, Roaches? Well, if we lift up these depots, these tanks are going to take care of it. I'm not saying we have the most easily defendable expansion in the universe, but yeah, when we start dropping, those tanks can easily be a good defense for us. And then upon noting that these are all hatch tech, this is where MMA really explodes forward. He is just going to... Drop, 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 non-stop. So before, yeah, we were going for our reactor medevac. We were going for our reactor starport, getting as many medevacs as we could quickly. In particular, getting two up really, really, really quickly. But because MMA's up against the wall a little bit, he's going to make tanks, he's going to keep making marines. But yeah, same basic logic. Look at this. Anytime it's a good time to drop, it's a good time to do Viking harass. Splitting everything up, picking off every single Overlord that he can. Poor, poor, poor Losira, who is out to such an early lead. MMA, dropping far away from where he wants to attack. Dropping very, very far away. So now, once again, in the Steal This Build series, we're identifying the basic opening that he's doing. And hey, look at the same guiding principle in terms of uh, building management. Once we are doing damage via drops, that is a good time to add on our reactors because he's distracted. We don't want to add those on sooner because we don't really know how to buy ourselves any time. If we built these reactors way too early, a Zerg with a big focus directed attack could kill us before we can even really make use. And MMA just dropping, and then lifting up, and then dropping, and dropping. There was, there was a medevac somewhere around here. Maybe it's dead. Oh no, there it is. In the unit counting station, we see whoop, four medevacs. Uh-oh. And MMA is closing this gap more and more and more all the time. More medevacs rolling on in. Just so great. Still dropping a distance away from where he wants to attack. In particular, dropping off creeps. That way queens can't be killing us as we're flying in to try to do damage. And this is actually free damage. I mean, what can Lucira really do? without a spire. And now suddenly, here's the big attack. Huge amounts of units from Losira. Cleans it up with relative ease, but still not going to forget about the drop. Now why is this a good time to drop? Because he just devoted a lot of his units to here. We know where a lot of his units are. These are not big drops. These are just very, very well-timed drops. He is going to pick off a queen. He is going to pick off some more drones. Very tiny, tiny drops, but strengthened by the fact that this push is just cutting in between everything and clearly repositioning all of Zergi's units so well. So now we are in a healthy position as Terran. We have our reactor starport because we've been favoring uh, doing our drop play early on. As we're going for our third base, we're likely going to see a second factory pop up by MMA. Oops, as I put push the plus key a couple of times. I'm going to speed things right along. It looks like, well, we might not see it at this point. We might not see it in this game. Hey, look, there he is, favoring his usual little mixture. But yeah, basically the drop aggression, the drop timing, is what makes MMA's play so astoundingly good. And I want you to note how safe all these drops are. The only time that he's doing this hurling, throwing drops at the opponent is when he is getting really strong positioning for his main army. Um, easily, easily gonna lose those, right? Those are not really gonna be very, very close. There's some sort of animal scratching at my door. 
They're really, really not going to be particularly close. Um, but still, they're going to allow MMA to get his main army in a very aggressive position. So let's recap. In game one, we did a lot of the opening, a lot of the specific nitty-gritty of when a lot of buildings were going down. But we noticed how many guiding principles were popping up throughout this play that, um, that we were seeing... Um, now my mind's blank. This is so great. Oh yeah, that we were seeing the combat shield pop up first. That we were seeing the um, reactored starport, or just medevacs in general, getting favored uh, early on. We were seeing when these drops go out. That's when the reactors go down on our initial barracks. We saw this idea of keeping our units alive more so than trying to do damage to the opponent. Those reapers were constantly, constantly pulled back and back and back and back and back and planted at the watchtowers instead of trying to suicide in to get that extra little teensy drone kill. Um, very, very exciting play to see from MMA, that super drop-oriented play. And in particular, if we think about the sort of deviations that go on, we did see, yeah, looks like in close positions, MMA was going to favor the tanks a little bit more. I see nothing wrong with that. But when we start to get really, really punished, especially in those mid and late game, or those late mid game situations, we're realizing every single moment of punishment, MMA sees as an opportunity to do another drop. You don't have that many units? Well, my drop is going to be really scary. Oh, you, you are expanding four times? Well, that means you're not going to have a Spire. That means my drop's going to be really scary. So virtually all the deviation we're seeing from MMA is him just realizing he can drop more and more early when the opponent's putting more and more pressure on. The tanks popping down early, again, I would attribute to the distances. Um, um, and just the general level of passivity that um, I think MMA is going to do. If you watch a lot of his other games, you'll see him be quite passive when he begins stockpiling a lot of tanks early on. Um, but either way, that is going to wrap up this particular instance of Steal This Build. Please look for Steal This Build number two, which will likely be up next. So, thanks for tuning in. I'm Day9, and good night.